What's up guys, Vim Diesel here. Today we're gonna do something a little different. In fact, I'm thinking about doing a Vim, or Vim Tutor Let's Play slash commentary. I'm just gonna go through Vim Tutor. But importantly, I'm gonna give you my commentary. I'm, I'm going, I'm returning to Vim Tutor after years and years, because there are all these people who watch my channel, I wanna learn Vim, I wanna learn Vim. All you gotta do is type in Vim Tutor in your command line. Um, but, I think there are a lot of little things that I want to add to Vim Tutor, so we're just going to go through it. I know you Zoomers love Let's Plays, so that's what we're going to do. All right, so I'm going to start off, just type in Vim Tutor in your command line and bring it up here. All right, Vim Tutor, Vim's a very powerful editor, blah, 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 um, stuff like that. Oh, wait, I'm okay, I got to play stupid. I got to play like I don't know what I'm doing in Vim. Okay, so we'll read. Now make sure that your caps lock key is not depressed and... Uh, press the J key enough times to move the cursor to 1.1. Alright, so 1.1, what's 1.1 on? It's on moving your cursor. Now, Vim, of course, actually I'll turn on sc uh, the uh, screen key so you can see what I'm pressing, but... Um, uh, so, Vim, H, J, K, L, they are your directions. So, K is up, J is down, uh, L is right, uh, H is left. So, notably, you can go through any of these lines. Notice that on lines where there's no content, if I go here and press L, obviously I'm not going, there's no like words out there to go to, so it doesn't, unless you have white space. So anyway, that's basic movement. Um, I know, I, you know, it cr I cringe because I know in history, there has been some gamer who has started to learn Vim and he's like, oh, I should change these to be lost. Just so annoying. All right, so most important thing, exiting Vim. This is, all right, the thing that annoys me most is soy devs who don't know Vim and like constantly brag about how they don't know it and how they can't exit it, all right? It's just such an annoying joke. And frankly, most of these guys probably actually know how to use Vim, but they're just being stupid. It just annoys me. Anyway, so the way they tell you is actually the dumb way to exit Vim, okay? So they say, first you gotta press escape to make sure you're in normal mode. Of course, if you're new to Vim, you don't even know what normal mode is, but we press the escape and they say press colon, colon, Q, exclamation point, and then press enter. All right, so we're out. That is the hard, that's the most annoying way to quit Vim. All right, that's a stupid way to quit Vim. Uh, how you, oh yeah, so control D is go down half a page. Control U is go up half a page, you know, D and U up and down. Um, but anyway, so this is like the dumbest way to exit Vim because it's way too many, I mean, you gotta press, first off, colon, that's hold down shift and press something. Q is over there, hold down shift and press, no, it's just stupid, that's a waste. Here's the real way to exit Vim. The real way to exit Vim is hold down shift, and press capital Z, pat, capital Q. You're out. That's the real way to exit Vim. Capital Z, capital Q, that's it. Or, now capital Z, capital Q is force quit, like exit and don't save any changes. If you do make changes and you wanna save them, press capital Z, capital Z. That's the real way to exit Vim. I don't know why people, whenever I see someone using like colon Q to exit, it's like, that's that's way too hard, I don't know. It's so much more ergonomic. It might not sound that much more ergonomic, but it's just like right, you know, you could one hand it. It's like no problem. Anyway, that's how you actually, actually exit Vim. Um, unless you wanna do something like, uh, you know, we'll say kill all Vim. Okay, that's another alternative. Oh wait, I guess that doesn't really work, does it? All right, whatever, who cares? Uh, okay, exiting Vim. So uh, line number three, or lesson number 1.3, how to delete stuff. So we're deleting stuff with X. No one deletes stuff with X. It's the most, I don't know why they're telling you this, but all right, this is just practice to get you moving around. So press X to delete the character under the cursor. Move the cursor to the line below marked, okay. Wait, all right, yeah. Okay, so to fix the characters, uh, move until the cursor, blah, blah, blah. Uh, so we're just going to delete the characters we don't need. Uh, I'm gonna do it the dumb way. Um, to get rid of that, Cal jumped over the moon. Man, it's so hard to use Vim this way. Now, of course, if you're a newbie Vim user, you're like, wow, you gotta press so many keys to delete stuff. No, this is like, this is like the dumb way to use Vim, but you gotta you gotta start somewhere. You gotta learn this. Um, so anyway, oh, what did I just do? So ZZ. All right, here's here's a Vim lesson for you Vim noobs. Let's say you're on this line. I, if I press ZZ, see how I'm on the line that says press X to delete blah blah blah. If I press lowercase Z, lowercase Z, don't hold down Shift as you know that's exit. But lowercase Z, lowercase Z, that puts that line in the middle. Or if you say uh, lowercase Z and then T, that puts it at the top. Or uh, 
Is it CB for bottom? Yeah, okay. All right, so that that's a pretty useful command. I use ZZ a lot. I You know, I, I've never really thought that that's the same key as it is to, like, save and quit, but uh, I get, I've never missed... I mean, you don't accidentally hit shift, so it's not really a problem. All right, so that's deletion. Press X to delete. Again, you don't actually ever do that uh, in Vim. You'll be using D and, uh, you know, motions to delete stuff. Okay, so press I to insert. Move the cursor to the first line uh, below marked uh, period uh, to make the first... Blah, 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 blah. All right, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to go here. We're going to go to our period here. We're going to press I, and we're going to say... Uh, wait, oh, we we're missing some here, too. So we're going to go here. There is some text uh, missing... Oops, did it the dumb way, didn't I? From this line. Okay. So the only things we really know how to do that VimTutors has taught us is HJKL, I to go into insert mode, right? And so insert mode, just to be clear, what's the difference between insert mode and normal mode? Well, insert mode is just like normal typing as it is in any other kind of program, right? Whereas normal mode is every single button in Vim is a shortcut to something. That's the magic of Vim. Maybe I should have said that beforehand, but th this is the most important point about Vim. This whole thing, normally, see a normal, n normal, I shouldn't even say that, a normie text editor, these are just like buttons that type stuff. No, in Vim, they're buttons that type, type stuff in insert mode, but in normal mode, they're actually, every single one of them is a shortcut that does something special and unique. That's the magical thing about Vim. It's like turning your computer, it's like taking your keyboard and making it like a control console. You have all these superpowers, you just gotta learn them, all right? So, uh, I to go into insert mode, you type whatever you want. When you're done typing stuff, you press escape. Now, first off, this is should be basic Vim stuff, all right? This is something you gotta do when you start Vim. Um, pressing escape is hard. It's way too far, like when you're constantly typing stuff and then having to go to escape to go to normal mode, no, that's too hard. So, caps lock. Just map it, look up how to map it on, you know, Linux, or I don't know, maybe some of you guys are using Mac, but look up how to remap caps lock, uh, or switch escape and caps lock. That's what you want, because caps lock, useless key in a great location. Change it to escape. It's actually very useful even outside of Vim, but in Vim, you're definitely gonna wanna have it, okay. All right, so basic stuff. ZZ again, actually, let's do ZT. Uh, so, lesson 1.5. Um, uh, appending. Oh, I was gonna say, okay, here's something I should say. Um, you may notice if I press H, J, K, and L, I'm moving really fast. If you hold down K on your machine, you're probably gonna be moving slower than me. Why is that? Well, the reason that is, let me show it to you. I have a little script it's called remaps, okay? This, this script runs when I start up my machine. One of the, and so, you know, I don't know what you're using, what distribution you're using, but just, you can put this command in your, uh, as a startup script and it will change your life. And it's this command right here, okay? It changes like the X rate. It basically is the rate where, you know, if you hold down a key, if it's gonna repli you know, keep pressing it over and over again. Because by default, it's, you know, it's gonna be something, like, actually maybe I could, I, I don't know what the default is. Let's say uh, 100. Let's see if that changes. I don't know if it actually, oh no. Oh, that seems even faster. Okay, let me, let's see, X rate. Uh, what? Oh, wow. Now I can't even type. All right, go back. Oh, go go back, please. All right, no, oh, man. Okay, yeah, that was too fast. I'm not even going to experiment with that. But just know, this particular command, x set r rate 350, that works perfectly for me. It just speeds things up just a little bit, so it's a little faster moving around. Now, of course, Vim pros, they'll be like, I'd just like to interject for a moment. You shouldn't be using HJKL to move around. You should be using, there are many other bonds to move around more effectively in Vim. I'll probably talk about those later. Um, but having this does not hurt. I do recommend it. I, and, I'm, you know, if you have it, it's easier to get around with more basic stuff like HJ and K and L. Um, just, you know, to go ahead and tell you some other ways you can move around. Let's say um, uh, curly brackets. So if you hold shift and press the curly bra I mean curly brackets on at least American keyboards there, you hold down shift and press the key with them. Uh, but uh, they move, you, you see if I press, you know, left curly bracket, it moves up by an entire paragraph. It's like skipping between paragraphs. That's one example of how to move around. 
Um, and I gave you the one earlier of control U and control D to move up half a page or whatever. Um, yes, I know I'm throwing a lot of stuff at you, but you know, you can, wa you can watch the video multiple times if you need. I, I don't know. I'm just sort of ad-libbing it. Okay, so let's see. Uh, let's add some more. Oh, yes, appending. This is some good stuff. So we learned that I puts you in insert mode and you can type stuff in. Okay. Also, there's capital A. And capital A, it automatic it puts you in insert mode and it puts you in insert mode at the end of the line. Notice specifically, oops, I'm redoing stuff. Oh, we haven't learned how to redo or undo stuff. I shouldn't be doing that. Um, but even if you're at the beginning of the line here, if you press capital A, now you're at the end. Now you can type in the end of this line. Same thing here. Okay, perfect. Um, so Vim Tutor doesn't notice it. So these are two ways to go into insert mode. I and capital A, but you can actually use capital I and lowercase a as well. There, there's actually a, a systematic change between them. Now notice this, okay, here's what I'm gonna do. Notice my cursor right now is on the T, the first T in text. If I press I right here and start typing, that is going to, that's inserting stuff to the left of that T, okay? Now, I'm gonna undo that change. Now let's say instead of pressing I, I press lowercase a. That puts me in insert mode, but now I'm actually, instead of on the left side of T, I'm on the right side of T. So if I type, it's gonna be inserting stuff on the right side of T. That's the difference between, so I is inserting on the left, uh, lowercase i, and lowercase a is inserting on the right side, right? That's the very subtle difference that'll come up. But capital I and capital A are just extreme varieties. So lowercase a inserts right to the right, Capital A goes all the way to the end of the line, all the way to the rightmost side, and then you insert stuff. That's the logic behind it. Whereas, what do you think capital I does? Well, capital I puts you at the very beginning, wherever you are, and allows you to insert stuff, okay? So you inserted some text, blah, 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 that's it. All right, so very useful command. So you now know four ways to go into insert mode. Uh, there are probably other ones that I'm not immediate. Oh yeah, there are lots of like, oh, well, we'll talk about some of those later. Um, okay, so editing a file. So use WQ to save and edit exit. Um, so you learn that, you know, colon Q, especially colon Q, exclamation point is exit, right? Uh, exclamation point just means force it. Don't, you know, confirm or don't, you know, I, I actually want you to do it. Um, but uh, so if you add in a W here, so if you say WQ, that means save and quit. Uh, I've never used this because um, an equivalent of this, I don't know if they actually say that this here, but an equivalent of that is just using X and you can use it with an exclamation point as well. That saves and quits. Now in Vim Tutor, it's not gonna matter if you save and quit because uh, you know, it's not gonna, um, it doesn't change, like you're using a temporary file here. So the changes I made in this are not persistent if I actually change it. Uh, but anyway, anyway, so appending, editing a file, uh, okay, yeah. So you now know how to save. Saving in general, if you just wanna save when you're in Vim, um, that's just colon W and that's it. Or, you know, exclamation point. Uh, uh, yeah, if you wanna force it, uh, but anyway. And forcing is important. Let's say you're, uh, you're stupidly modifying a file in two places. Uh, that might be a time to force save. Uh, you really shouldn't do that, or I think you could do, I don't even know. But there's, if it's like a read-only file or stuff, it'll prompt you for that. Okay, so lesson one summary. We now know basic stuff about Vim and I've thrown in some important tips. So you know HJKL, okay? You know how to quit, that's just with Q. You know how to save, that is with W and Q or just saving alone, I mean, this is like colon and then W, blah, blah, blah. Um, just in case you don't know, Vim has many, many commands, you, you know, colon commands. When you press colon, you're basically just going to the place where you can, um, you know, the, insert any kind of arbitrary Vim command. Uh, just as an example, let's, here's an example of a command that I really, I don't know. Uh, here's an example. I'm gonna highlight this entire document. We haven't talked about that yet. And I'm gonna say, uh, I'm gonna have, press colon to get into the command mode. And I'm gonna say sort. Okay, what did that do? Well, it actually just sorted every single line in this file. So now, it's sorted every line alphabetically. Of course, you don't really see that it's alphabetical because most of these lines don't start with stuff, but you can see here, right? It is, we've just highlighted everything and we ran a, a Vim command 
It happened to be sort that sorted everything. Other Vim commands are Q to quit or W to write a file. But uh, anyway, uh, now let me find where we were. Uh, WQ, okay. Okie dokie, and you now know how to use I and capital A to go into insert mode. I also talked about, you know, capital I, which goes to, begin to the beginning of the line and lowercase a, which is just sort of goes to the right. Um, all right, so lesson two, deletion commands. Now, of course, using X to delete as they brought up, totally useless, no one ever, okay, I, I use it every once in a while, but really you use uh, D to delete. Now, the magic of Vim, here's where the magic of Vim is gonna start, okay? Um, so, I, maybe I'll read this. Press escape to make sure you're in normal mode. Uh, use the cursor, blah, blah, blah. Move the cursor to the beginning of a word, blah, blah, blah. Um, okay. There, so now I'm on this line, I'm gonna say there are, it says there are some words fun that don't belong paper in this sentence. So we're gonna go, we're gonna go to the words that don't belong and they tell us to delete a word, you say D and then W for word. You, you have to be at the very beginning of it. So D and then W, that don't belong paper in this sentence. Okay, so now we have cleaned up the sentence. Now of course, uh, should I go into this now? I don't know, well, I'll, I'll talk about it in a second. Okay, so we've now learned how to delete a word. So, now, so X is just delete a character. If you say D, that's re it's really sort of like a, a Vim function. D is a Vim function. You're telling it, telling it, I want you to delete to delete something, and the next thing you press is going to determine what you delete, basically. All right. So more deletion commands. All of these are going to start with D. Um, it's really again, it's just D, and then you tell it what to delete. So Type D and then the dollar sign to delete all the way to the end of the line. So here's our example sentence. Someone type the end of this line twice. End of this line twice. So we go here to the part we want to start our deletion at and we say D and then dollar sign. Now, why dollar sign? If you know regular expressions, you know where this is going because dollar sign is a symbol of the end of the line in the same way that the little carrot thing is a sign of, a sign of the beginning of the line. Now, here's another motion command. Um, you don't have to say, if you just wanna move to a different part of the line, you can actually just press dollar sign to go to the end. Or you can press um, you know, zero to go to the beginning of the line. Actually, you know, I never really thought about it. Can you actually use the carrot? Yeah, you can use the carrot to go to the beginning of the line in Vim. The regular expressions in Vim, they sort of work together. I, I guess there are people who don't know what regular expressions are, but just play along if you don't. Um, so anyway, so D dollar sign deletes all the way to the end of the line, but that's a lot of key presses. I've always thought that's a lot of key presses. There's a secret. There's a secret is, the secret is you can actually just press capital D. That does the exact same thing. It's just like a little shortcut. You can just press capital D. That's nice. It's nicer than pressing D, shift, and then dollar sign. Just a nice, nice little secret. Best kept secret of Vim. Many best kept secrets of Vim. Okay, so. Um, on operators and motions. So I sort of alluded to this before. When you press D, it is that is the action you're gonna be doing. And then the motion, the key you type after D, maybe it's DW for delete a word, or delete uh, D dollar sign, delete all the way to the end of the, the line. Um, you have different things that you can press, okay? Um, so, they mention, uh, so let's see an example of them. So we know DW, let's try DW. So I'm gonna delete the word start. Okay, now that's gone. Uh, we can also say DE. And DE deletes the word, it deletes to the end of the word. And notice left over, we actually have two spaces. That's the difference between D and E, or uh, W and E as motions. Um, now I should be clear, in the same way that you can, let's say n not deleting, we're not talking about deleting at all. Again, as I said, you can just press dollar sign to go to the end of the line, or you know, zero to go to the beginning, or um, you know, caret to go to the beginning of whatever text you have. Um, additionally, W and E are actually movement commands as well. You can actually just, instead of, okay, if we're just pressing L, you gotta press it a million times to move out here. You could just press W. W actually moves word by word. It's a little faster than L. Now, of course, ours are super fast because you know we increased our X rate so we can move quite a bit faster. Uh, but you know, either way, W can move words and E means move to the next end of you know the next word or whatever. Um, and I should say the opposite of D, if you, so that's move forward a word. If you want to move back a word, that's actually just B. 
So if we press B, you're moving backwards. So hypothetically, if I'm here on the word current, I press D, and if I press B, what is that gonna do? Well, it's gonna delete from where we are, it's gonna delete backwards, so it deletes the, you know, in this case, it deleted the V before current, okay? That's what it does. So the logic of Vim is Vim has a lot of movement commands that, you know, move around for you. And you can put something like D for delete in front of them. And it will delete, and like instead of moving you there, it will actually delete everything that, you know, would be, you'd be moving over. Uh, in fact, in the same way I mentioned, you know, the, the, uh, curly brackets move up and down like through lines. Well, what happens if I'm here, I press D and then I press the curly bracket. It actually just deleted that paragraph that's below it. Very nice, okay? All right, so uh, using account for emotion. Oh, here's another good one, another classic, all right? Um, so in this case, we have, um, so typing a number before emotion repeats it that many times. Move the cursor to the start of each line below marked uh, blah, 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 with the, uh, the arrow. Um, this is just a line with words you can move around in it. So here, well, actually, let's see. Uh, let's see, type 2w to move the cursor two words forward. Are we supposed to do it from the very beginning? Oh, wait, yeah, 2w, okay. Uh, type 3e to move, to the cur move the cursor to the end of the third word forward. So 3e, okay. Um, type zero to move to the start of the line, okay, et cetera, et cetera. So the idea behind it is I just said that W moves you around. You can also put in front of W, you can put some kind of number that tells you how many times you do it. So let's say we're right here. We wanna move five words forward, very easy, five W, okay, very nice. So we, we have our motions, we're adding in numbers. So um, what happens if we say, D5W, D5W. What that does, instead of moving forward five words, it starts deleting from where you are to five words in the future. Okay, that's what it does. So the motion commands and the deletion commands, again, they're, they're the same concept, same thing. And again, if we want to um, say D4 uh, left bracket, that's gonna delete the four you know, bracket movements up, upward. So it's sort of like deleting four paragraphs, kind of. Um, all right, so blah, blah, blah. Using a count to delete more. Um, oh yeah, that's just, I just told you that. Okay, so let's do this. So they want us to delete stuff here. So here we have some extra letters. So we have two extra words. We can say delete two words, they're gone. We'll move here, we move there with the W command, we just moved over to the next word. Now we have four words we wanna delete. We say, delete four words. You're literally, like you're literally just speaking in English to Vim and it just does everything. You don't have to, like imagine being one of those guys who just like manually types everything out or like highlights it or, or something like that. I, I can't even, I don't know, this is like a totally different word, world. Um, so here we have three more, so D3W, okay. There, now we got it. Now everything's cleaned up. So that's how you do it. Okie dokie, operating on lines, lesson 2.6. Type DD to delete the whole line. Very, very nice one. Okay, so roses are red, mud is fun, violets are blue, I have a car, clocks tell time, sugar is sweet, and so are you. So let's clean this one up. Mud is fun doesn't really belong. Let's get rid of that. Uh, roses are red, violets are blue, I have a car. Uh, notice I'm just pressing DD, and DD works wherever you are in the line. It doesn't have to be at the beginning. It just means delete the whole thing. Uh, clocks tell time. That doesn't really make sense. Uh, sugar is sweet, and so are you. Roses are red, violets are blue, sugar is sweet, and so are you. Excellent. Okay, so now we've cleaned everything up. Um, and notice, let's say we're here. Um, now I could DD to delete this line. I could also say, for DD, and that just deleted all four of those lines. That's interesting. Um, okay, so next is the undo command. Now I'm gonna tell you before, we'll talk about that in a second, but I wanna show you, uh, well actually I've been using the undo command anyway, right? So if I delete, you know, for DD, all these lines, if I press to undo something, you just press U, un undoes stuff, that's it. That's all you have to know. Or to redo stuff, you press Control R. All right, they're gonna talk about that in a second. But here's what I want, here's an additional thing. So, um, we learned that DW is delete a word, right? Okay, but here's the thing. Um, 
sometimes if you're in the middle of a word, if you press DW, look at what it did. It didn't delete, you know, we were in the middle of roses and I said, delete word. Okay, it, did, it didn't delete the word. It deleted from where we were to the next word, but it didn't delete, I, I wanted to delete the word. That's like the normal way to do it, right? Now, the fact of the matter is whenever you have a motion, well, there are additional little modifiers you can put onto your motions uh, here or your text objects. I don't know the official terms, but here, here's the idea behind it. So you type D, uh, well, I'll just do it and I'll show you how it works. You type D A W that deletes a word and A means around. It, it's like the word and any white space around it. Okay. So D A W deletes that word in the space, the trailing space or whatever. You can also do D I W and that deletes just the word. I is sort of for inside. Um, it deletes just the word and not the white space around it. So this might seem like an arbitrary, you know, D-A-W, D-I-W. Now the, the good thing about that is you can actually, um, you know, you, you can do it from anywhere in the world, word, but also you can do, you can, it has different text objects aside from word. So let's say I'm right here on move and I decide I don't like this entire paragraph. Well, you could use W to delete a word, but it ends up P is a, a text object for the entire paragraph. I can do this, D, delete, around, P for paragraph, and it's gone. The whole paragraph's gone. D-A-P, it's gone. D-A-P, D-A-P, five D-A-P. You know, it, it, it's, it just works, you know? Um, so that those are, uh, well, okay, the real reason these are useful is this, okay? Let's say I have stuff, okay? Let's say I have stuff in uh, some parentheses. Okay, I don't know if they actually bring this, they probably bring this up later in VimTutor. I don't know if they do. But uh, either way, let's say we're in these parentheses and I wanna delete all this stuff in the parentheses. Okay, let's see, there are five words. I could go to the very beginning. I could say delete five words. That's correct, you could do that. But parentheses are also text objects in Vim. So anywhere in here, I can say D for delete, I for inside, and just parenthesis, and it deletes everything in the parentheses. Wow, it's like it's, ma it's like magic. Or, so that's DI parenthesis, but if you, or yeah, DI parenthesis, if you press DA for around parenthesis, that deletes everything, including the parentheses. It's magic, it's like magic. Uh, so that's how you do text objects in Vim. I don't know, maybe Vim Tutor talks about that later, I forget. I don't really remember like all the stuff they do. So press U to undo the last commands, capital U to fix a whole line. So let's go here, uh, fix the errors on this line and replace them with undo. Okay, I think that's all of it. So we can either undo them manually or we can just press capital U and undo them all. And uh, did they say, oh yes, and control R so U is undo, control R is redo, you know, the thing that you undid. Uh, there are also, here's some crazy things about Vim that, I, okay, I always forget this. I, uh, you can type in, so, you know, we remember colons are where you type in Vim commands, like for example, which ones have we learned? We learned a sort, that's a pretty sweet one. I guess those are, okay, yeah, this line moved up here, but all the other ones are sorted by number. Um, so another Vim command is, uh, what is it, earlier, I wanna say, is it earlier? I think, okay, let's say earlier 5M, okay? What happened here? Okay, we're back here at the roses are red thing. Earlier, what earlier does is it jumps back five minutes in your history. That's what it does. It's like, oh wow. I mean, so if you messed something up 10 minutes ago, you can literally just type earlier 10 minutes, oh, wait, earlier 10 minutes and it will go back 10 minutes. So now we're here back where we were 10 minutes ago. Uh, or I suppose, okay, what's the opposite of earlier? Is it later? I, I don't quite know, so let's go forward. Yes, it's later, okay. Now we're back where we were. We literally just time traveled in Vim. You, you wouldn't even think this is this is this old text editor. You, it can time travel, okay? All right, let's, let's see your whatever you're using do that. I, I'm sure a lot of uh, IDEs can do that nowadays. I, I assume, you never know, but uh, okay. So lesson two summary, DW, D dollar sign, blah, blah, blah. You will know all these. The important thing is um, there are special commands for mo you know, motions for moving around, like W is move 
you know, word at a time. B is word, you know, move backwards by a word. You know, E is sort of like W, but it moves to the ends of lines. Um, you know, I talk, we talked about brackets. And the important thing is if you want to delete stuff, you can just put D right before that and it will delete, you know, whatever, you know, let's say we want to go here. We want to delete, um, you know, delete three words, delete three words, bam. Okay. Additionally, I told you, you can also use A or I for uh, around or inside a text object. So delete around a paragraph will delete an entire paragraph and the white space around it. Or DIP will delete the entire paragraph. It'll leave the trailing white space. See, we're still on a blank line here, which would not happen if we did DAP. Um, now that, that might see the difference between DAP and DIP might seem a little obscure, but when you get good at it, you'll be like, oh, okay, I'll use this here. And it's just, it's just like magic. But definitely you should uh, keep in mind using parentheses and stuff like that. Uh, you know, DI parenthesis, that'll delete all the stuff in parentheses. And also it works with quotes and stuff like that. Uh, in fact, with quotes, it works uh, even better because you don't act, or I think it does. Uh, you don't even have to be in the quotes. I can say DI quote, and it actually moved to the next quote and deleted everything in it. Very interesting. Um, although it can be a little wonky if you have a, a line that has a whole bunch of quotes in it. Uh, so you should always try and be where, you know, actually where the quotes you will want to delete are. But, uh, all right. And we also learned how to undo and redo stuff. Okay. Lesson three, the put command. Let's see how long we can do this. I'm getting a little tired. I'm getting a little sweaty. The thing is for my videos, I always turn off my AC because it makes noise, but I don't know. I'm getting a little sweaty now. You know, it's just so, in we're going so intense. Vim Diesel, guys. Vim Diesel speed run. Actually, this is not a very good speed run. It's a let's play, but whatever. Okay, the put command. Uh, so P means put. If you just type it alone, obviously it's a text object. If you press D or some DA before it, P is a text object. But if you just type P by itself, it means put. Or you could think of it as paste because that's really what it does. Here's the idea behind it. Um, they give us some lines here. Um, so this is supposed to be a rose is a red poem. Uh, and it has A is at the bottom, B is the second one here, C is right here, and D is at the top. We got to reorder this stuff. So here's how it works. I can go here, delete a line, D, D. Remember that one. And I can go up here to where I want it to be, and I can press P to put it in or paste it in if you want to think of pasting. Or I can go here, D, D, delete that one, move it down here, press P to paste. Perfect. It just works. So that's that's how you that's basically how you copy and paste in Vim. Um, now I should say, um, copying and pasting in Vim because I know this is going to confuse some people uh, right off the bat. Um, this is Vim internal copying and pasting. It doesn't have to do with your system clipboard. Um, that is, if I if I um, you know delete that or whatever and then move to try and paste it in the Firefox, that's not going to work. Vim has its own internal registers for copying and pasting things, and this is actually a lot better for different reasons. You can actually Vim actually has as many play like every key. I, okay, basically you can store things in particular keys and then print them out from you know, the, the buffer or register or whatever they call it. it it's very useful. Um, but right out, out of the bat, Vim does not have the ability to copy and paste using your system clipboard. Um, now, I, or at least vanilla Vim. If you use GVim or I actually use uh, NeoVim, NeoVim is basically literally exactly the same as Vim, uh, except for it has, you know, it ha you can set it up to have, uh, maybe I should actually just talk about how to do that because people are going to get confused. I'm in NeoVim. And uh, in order to allow it to uh, use the system clipboard, you just got to put this line in, I'm pretty sure. There might be another, uh, yeah, I think that's it. You just set clipboard uh, plus equals unnamed plus. Uh, or at least, at least in Linux, you should probably look it up. Don't take my word on it right here. Just look it up online um, if you want Vim to use the system clipboard. Uh, I think I'll, I... You know, I originally was skeptical of the idea because it's sort of a Vim elitist thing to be like, oh, we don't need the system clipboard. We'll do our own thing. But it actually does sort of work out for different things. Um, so just know it's it, it's an easy thing to change. Um, just either install GVim or uh, what is it? Vim. Uh, there's, there's some other Vim plugin that adds it in. But uh, anyway, I did a video on that a, a long time ago. But I just use NeoVim because you can just add in the feature itself. Uh, all right. So the replace command. Um, type rx to replace a character with x. So replace by itself is actually not super useful. Um, well, well, we'll just do it. So here we're on this 
Uh, if we want to replace this A with the E, we just type RE, something like that. Uh, or here, we're, we'll replace that, we'll replace, uh, oops, replace that with the wrong thing, okay, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, another thing you can do, well, you haven't learned visual mode yet, but you can actually replace, like, you know, long sequences of things if you highlight them and replace, but uh, R by itself, I don't really find that useful. Uh, I don't really use it that much. Well, I, I don't want to say that. Let me think. Let me think of a use for it. I, I definitely use that. I will say that. Like, every, every once in a while it will come up, but that's not usually the way... Uh, usually you use the, you know, C for... Oh, actually, they're going to tell you what that is. All right, this is how you actually replace things, okay? You use C, okay? So, Everything you just learned about D, like DD to delete a line, D dollar sign to delete all the way to the end of a line, uh, D three W to delete three words, all of those apply, but with C, and what does C do? C deletes stuff and then puts you in insert mode automatically. What do I mean by that? So here's an example. Um, I, I would, you know, I guess I could use VimTutor, but you know, I'm just gonna do my own thing. Here's an example here. I got, um, so we already know that if I'm in these parentheses, I can press D I parenthesis and that deletes everything in the parentheses. After that, based on the stuff you already know, you know that you could go into insert mode and keep typing, right? Now C is like, it's sort of like both of those motions in one. It deletes stuff and then puts you in insert mode automatically. So if, I, if I'm anywhere in these parentheses, I press C I parenthesis, I can just start typing, okay? Or let's do the things that they want us to do. Okay, let's go down here. Um, so this line, they totally misspelled this. So if we wanna just replace this one word, we press CW line. Um, we can go over here to words. Okay, again, CW. Uh, need is drastically misspelled. I don't even know how you misspell that. Well, I guess they, yeah, I guess they shifted over uh, one one key or whatever. So need CW, type it in, press escape when you're done, and then we'll go here using the change operator, okay? So all the stuff you learned about Vim, or uh, a lot learned about D in Vim is true of C, except for C just puts you in insert mode at the, at the end of it. And of course, even, you know, so I mentioned capital D, D is delete to the end of the line, capital C, same thing, except for now you're in insert mode, that's it. And you might say, oh, well, there's, there's an entire different button just to like add a single key press, just to like optimize pressing one key. And yes, that's how Vim works. Like you want everything, you'll be changing stuff a whole lot when you're editing files. So it's really great to be able to, um, you know, just save you one key press because you'll be using this a whole lot. Uh, all right, more changes using C, uh, blah, blah, blah. They just said the same stuff that I, I was going to. Um, let's see, the end of this line needs, Okay, I guess they want us to uh, start here. So we can do C dollar sign to change until the end of the line, but I'm just gonna use capital C. Same thing as capital D, but you know, uh, to be corrected using the C dollar sign command. Well, they have an extra space there or something, whatever, man, who cares? Um, I don't know why I saved. All right, so summary, okay, P to paste. Uh, so let's say I, well, let's, another example. Um, let's say I delete around paragraph. I've now deleted that entire paragraph. I can move somewhere else. That's deleted, of course. But if I press P, bam, it reappears. It reappears where my cursor is. So I can move anything I want around. I want to move this around. I'm going to mess up all Vim Tutor. Okay, that's that's what I'm doing. I, I don't think I've ever seen Vim Tutor so brutalized. I haven't used this thing a long time. You know, I've actually guided a couple people in real life through Vim Tutor, like sort of uh, I mean, it's sort of like, it literally is like teaching someone a new video game or something, you know. Um, all right. So, cursor location and file status. Maybe I should break this up into multiple videos, but I, I, I keep doing it, so I, I don't know. I'm not too tired yet. May, maybe I'll, maybe I'll break it up. I don't know. All right. Cursor location and file status. So type control G to show your location in the file and file status. So you'll see down here, it says line 487 of 962 and also 50%, okay? We're 50% through the file, that's what that means. So here's what you can do in Vim. If, let's say I wanna go to 20, I wanna go to one fourth through the file. That is like to the one fourth of the way through the file. That is 25%. Guess what you do? Here's what you do. Two, five, 
percent. Now you're there. Now we can actually press Control G and confirm. Oh, we are twenty-five percent through. Or let's say, well, duh, seventy-five percent. Okay. Or let's say a hundred percent. Now, of course, you would never actually type a hundred percent because yes, because there is capital G. If you press capital G at any point in time, it goes to the bottom of the file you're in. Or if you type lowercase g twice, g g, it goes to the very top. Okay, so that's that's how you get around. Yeah, I'll use capital G and lowercase g g over and over again. And of course, if you don't want to use those, you can always use percentage signs to get fine grain control over where you're gonna go. Ninety percent, uh, you know, thirty three percent, whatever. Okay. Um, so that's that. And then, as they said, control G shows you where you are. All right, the search command. Um, yeah, I guess it's been sort of a long time to get all the way to the search command, but it is an important thing. Basically, slash is search. So if you press slash, notice that in the bottom of your screen, you have a little thing where you can type. And let's search for lol. Doesn't appear, pattern not found. Okay, uh, search for Vim. Okay, Vim exists. So it found this instance of Vim here. If you want to go to the next instance, you press in, 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 or capital N goes backwards, previous instance. Uh, let's go back to approximately where we were. Um, Okie dokie, search command. All right, that's pretty much it for that. Uh, all right, I'm, I'm bored with the stuff they're talking about now. Here's some other things that are a little bit useful about Vim, because, uh, oh, actually, they're gonna talk about parentheses, that's good, but uh, here's another little thing. What, for example, does O do? We're learning, we're learning more about these buttons and all. What does O do? O is a very useful command. Let's say it really is uh, start a new paragraph. Like let's say we're at, at the end of a line. O means start a new paragraph and put me in insert mode. Okay, that might sound like a totally arbitrary, like what? Again, that's one of those weird key combinations because you could at any point say, uh, let's see, how would you do it? Go to the next line and then enter insert mode and then you know make an extra line and then go into you know you could do that but o just sort of saves you uh, a couple key presses you'll be using o a lot uh, now capital o does the same thing but reverse if you if you're at the top of a paragraph and you want to start before that add in another paragraph or something like that that's what capital o does uh, so that's another little uh, little tiny tip all right so matching parentheses search Blah, blah, blah. Oh, oh, okay. This, this is a sort of interesting one. I don't really use this that often, but it's an interesting one. Basically, here's how it works. You can go to any, uh, let's say you have a parenthesis. You know, hopefully it has a, uh, a buddy on the other side, a matching parenthesis. And if, you're, if you have one of those parentheses highlighted, if your cursor's on them, you can actually just press percent and it will jump to the other one of, of those. Uh, or if I'm on this parenthesis, I press percent. Notice I go back to that original parenthesis and it works for brackets and it works for, uh, I wonder if it works for quotes. I've never thought about that. See, quotes are harder to do because you don't like, I don't know. No, it doesn't work with quotes. Dang. Oh, well. Um, but uh, so th this is something, I don't use this as much. Like, I feel like it is theoretically useful. I can't think of a time when I've used it, especially because if you're doing stuff like, let's use what we learned before, change in parentheses. You know, that takes place of a lot of the times you might need to do that. But I think they say they are, uh, I think they say here, uh, yeah, this is very useful in debugging a program with unmatched parentheses. Because, you know, if you have a really big, you know, let's say you have li lines and lines, like a block of code and some parenthesis is somewhere and you're looking for it, uh, you can always use this to check if there's a match. Okie dokie. So now we're going to get into more ooh, substitute commands. Now I remember when I first took VimTutor, I first used it, I remember learning substitute and it just went out the other ear because I was like, what? I, that's confusing, man. Like, I don't want to have to remember that. But that was before I knew regular expression. This is basically like sed, like a sed replace command. That's basically what it is. So as I said, we know some, you know, we know some Vim commands. Uh, we know quit, we know sort, stuff like that. Um, we're gonna, the S command, which I guess is sort for, short for substitute, um, basically replaces one, well, let's just do what they tell us to do. All right, let's be good boys. Um, okay, or do they, okay, yeah, we'll start here. So to use the replace command, you press, call, you go, you know, press colon to run a command. We're running the S command. Uh, 
then you put a slash and you say what I want to replace. And in this line, uh, the word the is spelled with two e's. So I want to replace that, you know, the with two e's. What do I want to replace it with? I press slash and say the, um, and then you press slash again. Um, now, if you just ran it like this, it will only modify one of the instances. The important thing you got to do is press G at the very end, and that replaces all the instances. Now, this might seem a little obscure, but if you, you know, watch the channel, if you use said, if you use a lot of command line options and stuff like that, this is exactly the same syntax as said. It's just really the substitute command, the thing you replace with the thing you replace it with, and then some options. G is, you know, the most common one. Uh, if you don't run G, it will only replace one match on the line you're looking at. If you are put or uh, if you do run G, it will, will replace all of them. Um, now, additionally, they note uh, you also have some other options here. So if you put parenthesis at the beginning of your substitute command, it will change every occurrence in the whole file. And um, uh, yeah, so it, it's, it's pretty convenient to add that stuff in. I think I actually, in my Vim RC, because this is sort of, I will admit this is sort of a pain to type out because often you, you know, you're in a file and you want to replace uh, you want to rename a variable or something like that. So you want to use one of these commands, but it's sort of a pain to type out. In my Vim, I, or my, you know, NeoVim or whatever, I actually just have it bound. Let me show you. So the, 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 okay. I actually just have it bound to like capital S. If I just type capital S, it actually writes the syntax for me. And I can say replace the with lol. Okay, so it replaces all of those instances. Um, but uh, you, you'll have to look into how to do that in your VimRC to figure that out. Well, here I should just show you. I don't know. It's a Vim tutorial. Um, map S. Yeah, it's basically this. So this means remap. And this is your so your VimRC. It's where you edit, you add in Vim commands or Vim settings, stuff like that. I just remap capital S to be this sequence of key presses. So I type out the syntax for it and I press left left to go back so I can start typing in the in the little brackets. Uh, all right, so lesson four summary. All right, how how much how many lessons are there? Maybe I should check up, I don't know. I, I noticed that I'm getting a little sweaty here. Again, no AC, it's such a pain. Uh, so control G, you learned about that. Importantly, GG to go to the top. Uh, capital G to go to the bottom. Also, oh, if you press a uh, parenthesis or if you uh, press quotes or whatever, let's say I'm here, I go to, uh, you know, 25%. I can actually press quote, quote to go back where I was a second ago. Um, that's just always what that does. Or, uh, well, anyway, where were we? So let's see what were we were talking about. We were talking about this stuff, right? Uh, okay. All right. So, um, Slash is search. I didn't mention it. I mean, they did. Uh, but question mark is search as well, except for by default, it searches backwards. And remember when, you know, if you're using the default search that's just slash, um, you will be, you know, it'll find the next match. Press N to go to the next next match and capital N to go back. Question mark is just that reversed. You're looking upwards. N will go further up. Capital N will go further down. Uh, I always get confused by question mark, or not confused, but it, I just find it a little unnecessary since you can, uh, well, I mean, I guess if you're looking for only one thing that's only up. Um, anyway, and then you have these substitute commands. Okie dokie, so uh, how to execute an external command. Now this might be useful for those of you who um, you know already know shell scripting. I will go ahead and say when I learned Vim, I didn't know nothing about the Linux or, you know, typing things on the command line. I, it was actually weird. This is weird to say, but I actually learned Vim on Windows. That, I know that's a weird thing. I, I know a lot of people, oh, Vim runs on Windows? I didn't know that. In fact, but I mean, it does. And that's where I originally learned it. Uh, so anyway, so colon plus exclamation point. That's actually the universal sign of run a shell command or something like that. Uh, so I can do this. I can type ls. Do I want? Yeah, I can type ls. It'll show you all of the stuff that's, you know, it'll, it's like running LS in your actual terminal. It'll show you the contents, stuff like that. Um, so that's that, blah, blah, blah. You don't think they tell you anything else. Uh, more on writing to files, blah, 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 blah. I'm a little bored. Uh, oh, all right, here's some good stuff. All right, selecting text. 
uh, this is important. Now I've done this actually a couple times in this video. Basically, so we've learned about two different modes. There is, um, you know, insert mode. You can go there by pressing I or A or C plus a combination of motions. Uh, and you can insert stuff. And of course, normal mode, again, normal mode is when you have all of your key, your precious keys are all shortcuts to make you, I don't know, Captain Kirk in his little command line, or command line, console. Um, v is vis visual selection. So V, if I press V, I can just move around and that will select stuff. I can use any of the motions that I'm familiar with, you know, brackets or something like that, or control D or something like that, and it will move around and it will visually select everything. In fact, you can use it with uh, something like, you know, we talked about DAP to delete all a uh, whole paragraph, DAP, undo that. You can also type in VAP, and that will actually, you know, visually select the entire paragraph. Uh, that can be useful. I mean, you can continue to change the visual selection or something like that. Uh, have they taught you about yanking and copying and stuff? I don't know, maybe they haven't. Anyway, well, I guess I'll tell you about that now. So um, you can, well, maybe I, you don't actually need to visually select to yank stuff, but uh, you, sometimes it's helpful. Um, so DAP to delete all a paragraph. YAP yanks the whole paragraph, meaning it basically copied it, okay? So I can go somewhere else and I can paste it in, right? It's sort of weird pasting it in itself, but you can go and paste anything in with P, okay? Um, but you can also, if you have visual selection, you know, let's say you have something visually selected, you could also just press Y to select that. Um, in addition to lowercase V, there's also capital V. Capital V, um, so lowercase v, to be clear, let's say I'm in the middle of this line. Lowercase v, you know, you just sort of manually move to the stuff in the line you want to select. Capital V selects everything by, you know, line by line. Okay, so if, if you have any part of a line, you have all of it. Okay, so it's going to select everything like that. And there's also control v. Control, control v actually moves like this. So it, do, it doesn't move with the stream of text. So to be clear, actually... If I use normal V, you know, I don't have a block selection like you might want. Uh, but, um, you know, control V, that's what control V does. You sort of get a block selection. And, you know, let's say I decide I don't like this text, D to, D to delete. It's all gone. All right. Okie dokie. Uh, retrieving and merging files. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, they're just going to have you do boring stuff. The Vim Tutor sort of gets boring as it goes on. Um, yeah, retrieves, this phone, blah, 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 blah. Uh, open command. Um, oh yeah, I guess they do tell you about, oh, you know, open up a new line. Uh, okie dokie. Let me see if there's anything else I feel. Oh, append. This is, wait. No, oh, no, 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 that's not what I thought. I thought it was period. All right, here's another cool command. Period. Most important command. I don't think this is actually in VimTutor. Here's what it is. Let's say I, mm, okay. Here's an example, real life example. Um, let's say I have some stuff in this, some parentheses, okay? Then I have some more stuff. There's some more parentheses, okay? Then there's some more stuff. And then, you know, more parentheses and there's more stuff in that. Notice everything in the parentheses, right? They're all different. There are different numbers of words and stuff like that. So let's say I wanna go and replace everything inside of these parentheses with you know, I don't know, somebody's name or some variable name, okay? So we already know, if you remember, C is change. And if you wanna change the things inside of a parenthesis, parentheses, para parentheses, you say change and then I for N and then parenthesis. So C, I, parenthesis. Now you can type whatever. Let's say, uh, we'll call this Billy, okay? Now the thing in the parentheses, it's Billy. So here's the cool thing. Now let's go to this other parenthesis. Okay, hypothetically you're, you're there and you want to do the same thing. Now what would you do? You, you would type C, I, and then parenthesis and you would retype Billy, right? No, you wouldn't do that. Here's what you do. You press period. That's all you got to do. You just type period. And Vim, what period does is it redoes, redoes the last command you did. So I can go over here, press period again, bam, Billy. Here's another example. Okay, here is some text. Okay, I'm actually gonna, uh, so uh, maybe I should explain. I don't, did they not talk about yanking? Maybe I just skipped over that, but uh, you know, so DD, delete a whole line, to yank a whole line, YY. 
Okay, so now we have yanked this. So I'm gonna paste it a couple times. You know, maybe I'll say five and paste that. Uh, or maybe, uh, well anyway, that, I don't wanna complicate it. So another thing you could do um, is, let's say we're on this first line and we want to add some text to the end of all of these lines. There are, there are actually multiple ways to do, I mean, there are a million ways to do everything in Vim, all of them more efficient than the others. But here's an example. Let's say the first one, you know, I go here and I was like, um, uh, I need to add some more to each line, okay? So I pressed capital A to go to the end of the line and insert, and then I type the stuff I wanted, pressed escape, now I'm back in normal mode. Now you might think if I wanna add that to every other line here, I would have to do that manually and blah, blah, blah. No, you just type or, or period, 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 period. Or actually, you know what? Let, let's do it even more efficient than this. Another Vim command that's very useful is the normal command. So let's say I have all of this stuff highlighted. I'm gonna press colon to go into command mode and I'm gonna say norm. Norm is a fantastic command. Uh, what it does is it says, I'm gonna run the sequence you gave me in normal mode on all of these lines. So I'm just gonna press period. And it just did all of that for me. Wow, that's magical. It's the, this, this kind of stuff is, it's fantastic when you're doing it in real life. You'll be like, especially norm. I, I love it as a command. You can do all this, these crazy things. You just gotta keep it in mind, right? Um, but you know, if you forget norm, again, you can do them manually. Or uh, do they teach macros here? Maybe I should talk about macros, I don't know. Um, but uh, anyway, let's let's not complicate it more. Well, I'll just, just for evenness sake, norm, bam. All right, uh, another way to replace. Okay, this is a good, good thing to do. So type capital R to replace more than one character. So I said that the regular R, you know, if you're manually replacing something with R, it's very inefficient because you got to do it one character at a time. It's like deleting stuff with X. No one actually does it. But capital R puts you in replace mode where basically you just overwrite the text that's already there. Okay, so here's the example they give us. They have XXX and they want us to replace it, place it with four, five, six. Now, as you already know, you could do CW, right? CW, or you know, even if you're in the middle of it, CIW, right? And then you could type you know, that stuff and blah, blah, blah. Um, but you could also use R. Um, and R, you just press, or capital R to be clear, and I just type four, five, notice they're overwriting the X's, six. That's it, okay? Press escape when we're done. That's replace mode. Uh, or I can go here, replace mode, five, seven, nine. Now replace mode is actually for totally different use cases than change because here's why. Let's say I'm here, I wanna replace gives with, um, uh, I don't know, bestows or something like that. Let's say I, I type capital R, bestows. Ooh, look at that. It actually overrided the text that follows after it. So capital R is only used for replacing something of the, like the exact same number of stuff. Um, now this is still useful, it's still replic, you know, you can still press dot to, to redo it, and, or I'm pretty sure you can, yeah. Um, but I think in 99% of the time, or at least 95% of the time, you want CW or, or CAW, CIW, uh, so bestows, okay. Um, you know, Vim does actually, I, I thought for a second, is that spelled right, bestow? That's not a word you use that often. Vim does in fact have a spell checker. Actually, maybe I should bring that up, um, spell. Okay, uh, I always have to, I have it bound to a particular key binding in my Vim, but uh, you can do this. You can say uh, set local, ah, shoot. I might actually have to download a dic dictionary for that. Spell lang equals in US. Okay, yeah, okay. So notice what happens is escape here uh, became highlighted. That's because I have my spell checker on. So spell, uh, blah, blah, blah. Well, that's not spelled, spell is not spelled wrong, but it will also um, highlight stuff that's like, um, you know, not capitalized or stuff like this. So this is, you can see that this word is not a word. Um, you can go to it and you can, uh, you know, you, oops, you can press, well, maybe I'll get a word that's closer to being a real word. Let's say apple. Okay, except for with only one P. You can press Z and then equal sign, and it will actually give you a list of words that this thing could be. Wow, look at Vim. Um, 
look at this minimalist text editor, that, or at least it looks minimalist. It actually has literally every feature in the world. Bloat! Um, but you, you can type which word you actually want it to be, and bam. So let's say I actually did forget how to spell bestows. Okay, it would, oh look, that's highlighted. So I'll say Z equal, and oh, there, there's the correct spelling. Or maybe we'll, we'll say bestows. Why not? Okay, so that's how you do it. And also, if you have multiple misspelled words, okay, you can go from misspelled word to misspelled word using um, uh, bracket S. Okay, so we're jumping forward to different words. Now, look at look at my words. They're so the colors are so bad. I need to change that. I think that's in my own configuration. Okay, so oh yes, now we're talking about copying. Come on, All right, I've been waiting for this. This. This Vim Let's Play has been, I don't know, twists and turns for me. I always forget what's where. So use Y to copy text and P to paste it. So, you know, all the stuff you can delete or change with C or D. You can use Y on. So again, Y, Y is copy a whole line. You can paste it in however many times you want. Let's say I'm here. I want to copy just two words. So I can say yank two words. And then I can go here, visual mode, visual mode, visual mode, visual mode, over and over and over again. That's how you, you do it. Or even here, of course, yank inside parentheses. That will copy out paste. And I'm pasting it inside of, ins inside of itself. Or I can say yank around parentheses. And kids, what is that gonna do? That's right, it's gonna copy the parentheses too. All right, so we're gonna paste those in as well. I don't know why I typed the O there. Oh, I guess I was pressed O twice. All right, um, set option. Uh, just this just learn uh, learns you about. Um, man, how do you okay? Uh, set local spell. How do you? Oops, I'm gonna turn off that uh, spell check. Okay. All right. So the set option is uh, just sets variable. Uh, sets variables. So one example that you might want to use is IC. So here's an example. Uh, let's say right here we have the, I don't know why I'm pointing to it, like you can see what, you know, what I'm pointing at. But let's say we have the word search here, okay? And we wanna look for that word search. Well, I'm gonna press, you know, uh, slash, and then I'm gonna type in search, okay? Oh, it didn't work. It found this search and it found this search, but it didn't find this one because it is not case insensitive by default. But you can set the command set IC, okay? And now if we, we uh, search for it, ah, it shows up because searching is now uh, case insensitive. You can also set, as they say, HL search, say set HL search, and that will highlight whatever you're searching for. Um, so, that, so all of these things, now you might say, oh, that's all this stuff is hard to remember. All these variables, I don't wanna to have to remember that. You don't have to remember that. Because what happens is when you, you know, as I mentioned, if you want, for example, the ability to copy and paste from your clipboard, you, well, you gotta use NeoVim or something like that, but you can just put this line in your Vim config file. Uh, the same thing, if you like, for example, highlighted searches, uh, you can just put set, you know, I, I could just put in, uh, set HL search in my Vim RC and whenever I open Vim, that command will already, it will automatically have run. Um, so it's very, very nice. Uh, I actually really hate highlighted search. So I'm gonna turn this off. So uh, what is it? No HL search. Uh, man, I, I really hate highlighted searches. It's so annoying. Um, okay, so we talked about O, I had talked about it earlier. We talked about A. Uh, all the stuff we've talked about, blah, 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 and variables. Getting help. Um, you put comments in the video description. I, I don't know. Anyway, Vim has actually a help menu. If you type in help and then you say, want to learn about Vim pains or something like that. Oh, look, it pulled up information about pains or something. Or is this actually, or, yeah, whatever. No, this is just the help. Um, uh, so anyway, I don't know. You have to actually search. Let's see. Who knows, I don't actually use help. Uh, okay, creating a startup script. That is actually Vim, that's VimRC. That's what I was talking about just a second ago. Um, so just to be clear, you know, well, maybe I should say what an RC file is. Is it like at the end of this video and should I not talk about that? But anyway, the idea, in case you don't know, 
in case you're totally new here, and you just you just watched like I don't know how long I've been recording this, but all this Vim stuff. Just in case you don't know, files like Vim usually have something you know called an RC file. Okay. Usually you keep your VimRC in your home directory. It's .vimrc, and you can open it up and you can put all your favorite settings, set, HL search, you know, stuff like that. You can put all the settings you want that I just talked about a second ago in there. Okay. Now mine is not in VimRC because, uh, as I mentioned ago, uh, a second ago, I use NeoVim. It's in a slightly. It is in where is it? It's in uh, config slash NeoVim slash invim slash init dot vim, but. Anyway, that's not important. Uh, okay, command line completion with, yeah, you know how to tab complete, right guys? So you can do stuff like no HL and then type tab. Basic command line thing, works in Vim, works everywhere else. I think, I think we're about done. I think that's about it. That's our let's play of Vim Tutor. So this, I, I'm glad, I'm Vim Diesel. I've been your uh, guide through Vim Tutor. Hopefully you made it through. Uh, you probably missed a lot, so do it over and over again. That there's no shame in that. I did Vim uh, Vim Tutor multiple times when I started. I've helped other people through Vim Tutor multiple times. Uh, I went through this very fast. Uh, sorry if I went a little fast. If this is like your first time, so just do it on your own pace. Rewatch the video if you want. Have fun. I, I've said this in other videos. There are a lot of things I, I do on a channel that are you know maybe a little niche. And I've found a lot of enjoyment from, and you can optimize a lot of stuff with. Um, but a lot of them aren't for everyone. I will say Vim is one of those things that should be for everyone. Like everyone who knows, um, you, you know, who is doing anything on a computer should learn how to use Vim. What we've talked about now, hopefully we've learned some cool stuff, right? But what we've talked about now is just the tip of the iceberg. Vim is so powerful, despite being this little tiny program that's installed on every single server. You know, if you really get to learn to use Vim, you will never be like, oh, I wish I had this IDE on my, you know, server or something like that. It is so powerful. You can get so much out of it and it happens pretty quick. So you do you, you do your thing. Um, this has probably been the longest video I've done in a long time. I just had nothing to do this, this, this afternoon. Um, so I'll see you guys next time. Enjoy it. Enjoy Vim. Have fun. Redo it. Learn something. Yep.